Welcome back to War Paint TV. Friday, May 28th, 2010. Once again, I'm Shane Williams here with Chiefs Insider Nick Athenick. We just went through two weeks of training camp. Uh, we've had organized the team activities. Let's be let's be correct here. Or organized OTAs, <laughs> we, they, they love to call it. Uh, you know, they had the news about the Dwayne Bow situation. Do you think that's really much of an issue now? Because they seem to be sweeping it under the carpet. Well, you know, when you upset the entire locker room of players by divulging quote unquote things that uh, happen on the road and uh, you know whether it's true or not is, is irrelevant the fact is there's a code in the National Football League among the players Dwayne broke that code he's gonna have to live with the consequences uh, you know I understand he had a great he had a great OTA week this week he was he was dead on in practice he wasn't dropping passes maybe this is what he needed I know that uh, head coach Todd Ailey had a little uh, uh, probably a little slap in the face session with him and said wake up or else you're not going to be on this team. They need Dwayne Bowe to be successful. He needs to keep his mouth shut. He needs to concentrate on playing football. And trust me, the players in the locker room will take care of Dwayne Bowe. And if, if it helps Dwayne grow up and it makes him a better football player for the Kansas City Chiefs, then it was probably worth it. If not, you know, it could be a long year for Dwayne Bowe, who I think has to prove this year he is a number one guy, a potential all-pro wide receiver. If he doesn't, he will not be on this team in 2011. Well. We'll have to see how far his uh, apology went yesterday and what happens uh, from here on out. Now let's talk about WarPaintIllustrated.com. There's a lot of exciting changes going on with it. Uh, tell the WarPaint fans, not only the WarPaint fans, the Chiefs fans out there, uh, the changes that we, have, uh, that we have made. Well, you know, we, now we were able to put Warpaint TV up on the front page instead of having to, uh, you know, put everything on YouTube so people are going to have access to this. We are going to bring the Out of Bounds podcast back. We'll hopefully have that up by training camp, which I know was very popular. We had a lot of fun doing it in different locations and having guests, but uh, our man uh, Justin is going to be our camera guy and editing guy and partner of Warpaint Illustrated also is, is going to help us get all that done. You know, we're just going to try and do things a little bit differently. Our message boards are going to have a makeover here shortly. Um, you know, we've got a lot of new members. You know, this is still the only place for people to get information about the Kansas City Chiefs. And uh, we do have access privilege out at Arrowhead, uh, you know, with OTAs and mini camps, and, and hopefully through the regular season. But even if not, we still have our sources. We still have people we talk to. We still have relationships with players. Nothing's going to change. We really just want to improve the overall aspect of Warpaint Illustrated and, and developing Warpaint TV. You know, we've come a long way, and now that we have a place to, to show it, uh, we've got a, a guy who's going to help us in James. He's going to allow us to, to do some cool things, do even more shows. So I, I'm excited about it. And uh, I think the best is yet to come. Of course, we still have the magazine. You can order 888-979-0979. Got to throw the plug in there. Uh, but, you know, it, it, we've got a great relationship with Fox Sports. Uh, there's some talk about integrating the chief site, I mean, our site with Fox Sports and their chief site. I think that may happen over the next year or so. So now's a good time for people to, to learn more about Warpaint Illustrated. And this is one way to do it. You heard it here first from Chiefs Insider Nick Athen. Coming up next... As our new beat writer for WarPaintIllustrated.com, Connor Crawford. Here you go, Connor. Here's the ball. Welcome back to WarPaint TV. We're here with our very own beat writer, the man who's been inside the Chiefs locker room the last couple weeks with the OTAs, Connor Crawford. How's it going today, Connor? Good. How are you? Yeah, I'm doing really good. I'm really glad you're here today joining us. Uh, what a Chiefs fans would like to know, Chiefs fans at WarPaint Illustrated, I'm sure Chiefs fans worldwide, is what is the overall vibe been like at uh, the practice uh, practices the last couple of weeks? Well, so far I've seen that the Chiefs have really connected with good chemistry. The whole Dwayne Bowe situation really isn't affecting them, I don't think. They're all on the same page. The offense, you know, it, it struggled at first. Castle being really inconsistent and Dwayne Bowe pass, dropping passes, but that's a given. It's really early in the off season. It's just OTAs. It's not training camp. It's not preseason or regular season games really nothing to worry about but besides that you can tell the team's on the right page you know what surprises me connor uh the way Derek johnson ended last season playing a little met middle linebacker he was showing that he was worthy of a number one draft pick in 2005 with a 15th overall selection uh training camp starts what happens Derek johnson's still running with the second team what's it going to take for him to be to get that number one position back well, I talked to Derek in the locker room, and he had actually told me he said he's going to guarantee that he's going to be a starter by training camp. He's shown a great session in OTA so far. Yeah, it's with the second team, but still you can tell that he's going to have a role on this team. It's just I think Todd Haley's trying to test him right now to make sure that he really is going to fit and be one of those right 53 players. You know, you love his attitude. He, he, 
he comes to work. You, you never hear him crying in the media. So it's, it's definitely, definitely a good sign that he's willing to fight to get that number one position back because, honestly, DeMario Williams and Corey Mays, he hadn't shown, they hadn't shown me or I think a lot of Chiefs fans that they're worthy of that spot. What do you think? Well, and, and Derek Johnson's a good character player. He's, he's got great character. You can tell he's, he's respectful, and he's not going to be going out there demanding a trade or anything. He's going to go out there and hustle and play really hard, and you can tell that I think he is going to be on this team for a while. You know, there's a, a guy like Dwayne Bowe going out to talk to ESPN, and there's, you know, we saw what happened to Larry Johnson. We see if, if you don't have the right character, then you're not going to fit in with the team in the future. Now, you've been telling me, uh, you've been talking to Eric Berry quite a bit. He's getting to know you now on a first-name basis. Uh, can you elaborate and let the Chiefs fans know, what, what kind of guy is Eric Berry? Been uh, the last couple of weeks you got to see him. What's he, over, what's he like? Well, Eric's, you know, he's fitting in with the team really well in practice. You can tell, you, you can look at him and you'll think like, wow, that guy's, he, you can t you think to yourself, he's probably been on the team for five years now. He's fitting in very well. He's great. He's got great character. He's got a great passion. He's very friendly to go talk to the media. He, instead of the media coming to talk to him, he comes up to us to talk. Same with Dexter McCluster and Javier Arenas. They're both the same. They're both willing to come and talk and show that they're ready to be in the, to fit right in with this team immediately. You heard it here first from Connor Crawford. Keep it right here at warpaintillustrated.com.